I'm Kristen Oaks White and I'm Avery Davidson. Thank you for joining us for this week in Louisiana agriculture. The only TV show bringing Louisiana farmers and consumers together every week. Well, the Louisiana crawfish industry includes nearly 1400 farms with more than a quarter million acres of ponds in production for the farmers and their families. That equals nearly $200 million in income. All of that is from the LSU Ag Center and does not include money made from the processing of crawfish. So when a news story from Detroit goes viral, calling one of our favorite foods an invasive species, you know that Cajuns are going to respond. By now you've probably seen the story online out of Michigan about the Louisiana red swamp crawfish being an invasive species. That story by Paula Tutman has been shared more than 45,000 times, has more than 21,000 comments. Look what, doing. Look what he's doing. He's inside a burrow and he's pulling out a red, a Louisiana red swamp crawfish or crayfish. Paula Tutman won an Emmy for her work. I have an award I received from my elementary school for patriotism, and well, it hangs under my Iraqi flag, which I brought back from Baghdad. But I see here, I have a pair of interns and my big news camera standing up, and over here is Christian Richard. He is a rice farmer here in Vermilion Parish, and I, he's holding something that I think he's gonna talk about in just a moment, but I figured that he would be a great guy since he deals with the Louisiana red swamp crawfish on a regular basis on his farm. Christian, how do you how do you deal with this uh, Louisiana red swamp crawfish? Well, we don't we don't really deal with them. We welcome them because it's big business for our farming operation. We'll, we'll go and set these traps out, and we'll just put bait in the top. We'll run them daily. Um, we're catching you know you, you can a good number is about a pound a trap. We'll, we'll grow a rice crop and then as soon as the rice crop is finished, we'll flood the fields back and we'll go put our traps out around Thanksgiving and then um, really start harvesting, depending on the, the, the temperatures during the winter, but harvest usually ramps up around the first part of February. So they were talking about having about 200 crawfish in a single pond. You've got your pond here that you're still trapping in right behind you. About how many crawfish do you think you have in there? Well, that's a hard number to come up with. There's a lot more than 200, but you know, just in the peak of, of harvest, we may be looking at anywhere between 50 and 75 crawfish just in one trap. And in this field right here, if it's 60 acres and we have 600 traps, I mean, you can do the math and, and really come out with a pretty substantial number. You know, How important is crawfish? Crawfish is very valuable for South Louisiana in fact that, or in terms that we really don't have any other rotational crops to, cro to rotate with our, with our rice crop. And it's a natural fit. Um, the rice crop provides the habitat for the crawfish to grow in. We'll reseed a, a rice field in June with crawfish from another, a neighboring pond. We'll actually take them out of that pond and we'll go throw them into a rice field. And then we'll try, turn the water off for harvest. And then usually um, September, October, we'll reflood the fields and hopefully the crawfish come back out of their burrows and, and we'll, we'll put traps out in, uh, around Thanksgiving and then we'll, we'll start trapping after the first of the year. Is there a shortage on these traps? Could maybe folks in Michigan get their hands on a trap like that? I think that there's probably a few local guys who'd be more than happy to uh, accommodate them in, in whatever whatever uh, capacity or whatever habitat they're finding these crawfish in. Um, these are 52 inch um, pyramid traps and they're usually the water's about to this this part right here. So, uh, you know, every every from, from what I've seen on the video, they, they have something that's kind of a similar design, but uh, you know, I guess uh, I guess if they're only shooting to catch 200, then uh, you know it's probably not that big of a deal. Well, Christian, thank you very much for that. And so you see, there are people here in Louisiana willing to help out with our neighbors in Michigan. Now I've. I've got to say that some of this was, was very much tongue in cheek. I know from working years in a newsroom that not every day are you going to get an Emmy award winning story. Some days they are Razzies. And also I understand that just because something is plentiful and beneficial to one place, 
like uh, what we had here in Louisiana. Some folks thought it was a good idea to go and get Nutria, which provided great pelts for where they came from, but brought them to Louisiana. And now they're doing a lot of damage to our coasts and causing coastal erosion. Also, I always think about the lionfish. People had those in their fish tank and now they've gotten loose in the Gulf of Mexico and they're causing problems. So folks up in Michigan, really, I understand how something we consider a great delicacy could be an invasive species there. And I know that our farmers, our ranchers, are willing to help out as much as they can. Uh, God knows anyone who remembers 2005 or 2016 in Louisiana knows that a little help can go a long way. If you want to see the original story from WDIV, we have a link on our Facebook page. Be sure to read all the comments. They're quite amusing, and we're going to share a few a little bit later in the show. However, as I said before, this can be a serious problem, and while we enjoy having a little fun at Michigan's expense, let's not forget that we in Louisiana are the most helpful and hospitable people in the country and should never turn away a call for help, especially when we have the most knowledge about crawfish. It seems like everybody's gotten a big kick out of this and had a lot of fun, including news stations. Yeah, a lot of news stations went nuts with it, doing their own stories as a follow-up, and, I, you know, I'm included in that because I, I saw the story and I was like, wow. Really? I mean, it just seemed like it was such a, it's so strange to us, but it's a creature that doesn't belong there. And that's really at the bottom line for the folks up there in Michigan. Very, very true.